MTV World Stage presents, in this issue we will tell you the success story of the legendary Jay of our time known as Avicii so subscribe to our channel put a like and we are starting. Avicii, real name Tim Berglund, was born on September 8, 1989 in Stockholm, Sweden. The Avicii alias actually means the lowest level of Buddhist hell. Once, when Tim needed to register a page on the MySpace social network, one of his acquaintances shared an interesting story about Buddhism, in which the word Avicii sounded. Since many of the names were already taken, the Swede simply chose Avicii. Daft Punk, Axwell, Ryan Blair, Eric Pritz, Joseph Kelly and Tisto have a great influence on Tim Berling's work. In addition, video games, which became a real passion of his childhood, contributed to the formation of Avicii's musical personality. In 2008, at the age of 18, the first try of the pen, which brought the musician popularity, was a remix of the soundtrack for the famous game Lazy Jones, for the Commodore 64. Later, the remix was renamed, Lazy Lace, and released as a separate single on Strike Recordings. The success was not long in coming, the eminent Tisto and laid-back Luke immediately drew attention to it. In 2008 Tim won the track competition for Pete Tong's Fast Tracks program, and immediately followed by the release of the winning tons, Manman, on Pete's label Bedroom Bedlam. In May of the same year, he signed contracts with At Night Management and Vicious Grooves. The musician did not stop there and in 2010 released a joint release with his compatriot John Dahlbach. The collaboration track was named, Don't Hold Back, and in many ways opened the way for the guy to the electronic scene. The next big achievement was working with Tisto and Sebastian Ingrosso. After such successes, the musician was noticed by the Emmy Music Publishing label, with which Avicii signed a contract and collaborates to this day. Also in 2010 Avicii co-authored a two-disc mix compilation, Super U. 2011 was the most successful year for the Swedish house star, but it was not without a scandal. In the summer of 2011, British singer Leona Lewis presented the song, Collide, an excerpt from Avicii's unreleased track, Penguin, was used as the instrumental component. No sampling permission was granted, and following a plagiarism scandal and threats of legal action, Lewis' single was released with Avicii as co-creator. In October 2011, the release of the most successful Avicii track, Levels, is released. In the UK, Austria and Germany, the track managed to enter the top 10 of the music rating, and in its native Sweden and Norway, Levels managed to reach the top of the chart. Also in 2011, Tim released an EP, The Singles, a compilation, Avicii Presents, Strictly Miami, opens his own recordings levels and a radio show of the same name. And as a result of the work done, in 2011 Avicii rose from 39th to 6th place in the J Magazine ranking, 2012 started off very well for Avicii. The 54th Annual Grammy Music Awards for Dance Track of the Year nominated Tim's collaboration with David Guetta at Sunshine. On March 25, 2012, another significant event happened in Tim's career, a joint performance with the pop queen Madonna. However, this might not have happened if not for a series of other events. First, Tim remixed one of her latest hits, Girl Gone Wild, and then sent the track to Madonna's manager. Long waiting for an answer brought a positive result, the pop diva really liked the tune, and moreover, she wanted to present it together as a live performance at the UM Festival in Miami. Actually, this performance kicked off a new tour of Madonna Magna, in recognition of Avicii, Madonna introduced me to UM, which was incredible. We met about an hour before that, and it was completely unrealistic. She is perhaps the most famous singer in the world. She is the one that everyone grew up with and it was such an honor. Besides, it was nice of her to come to my stage, and not for me to carry my things to her. On April 10, 2012 Avicii launches the sale of a 5,000 batch of us flash drives, in the form of small statuettes of a suite. And in early August, Tim was invited by Ralph Lauren himself to participate in an advertisement for the denim. At the end of August, Avicii goes on a tour of the cities of the United States, where one of the most important events in his life will take place. Tim will play the set at the world-famous New York Radio City Music Hall. Never before has any representative of electronic dance music been honored to perform in this legendary place. Every year, Tim can be found at the largest festivals ranging from Koahela to Ultra Music Festival. 
and it was at Kohala that the Swedish talent presented the public with a stage made in the form of a mask, where Avicii himself appears at the head. Filled with hundreds of light, laser effects, it immediately captivated fans, and now Tim often travels with similar shows throughout the United States. So that I actually still remain the J and control everything, while at the same time giving myself entirely to the production. As for my new scene, to be honest, I was extremely impressed with the scene of Devna, I really liked his setup with AQ. I wanted to do something new and really cool in that spirit, and that's how this mask appeared. Facts from Avicii's life In 2013, the final of the Eurovision Song Contest was held in the Swedish city of Malm. And who did the organizers invite to write a hymn for him? Of course, the members of the legendary ABBA group Bjorn Olvius and Benny Anderson, and with them 23-year-old Avicii. The song, We Write the Story, became the result of the work. The anthems of the World Cup have traditionally become hits on a planetary scale, because this sporting event is watched on all continents. The title song of the 2014 soccer tournament in Brazil is, Daram Jato, featuring Avicii as the songwriter and artist. If you focus on views on YouTube, then the most popular Avicii video is, Wake Me Up. It has been viewed over 1.5 billion times. This completely unusual composition in terms of music, which combines such different styles as soul, country, folk and, in fact, electronic music, took over the world in 2013 and sounded from almost every radio receiver. Avicii co-wrote it with Incubus guitarist Mike Einziger and soul singer Allo Black. Moreover, according to the assurances of the musicians, it took literally one evening to create it in Einziger's home studio. Many people predicted Avicii's departure to a more rock sound, because such iconic rock figures as John Bon Jovi, Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day, Chris Martin from Coldplay and Serge Tankian took part in the work on his second album, Stories, from System of a Down. However, this fact did not affect the dance direction of the disc. The guest celebrities just fit into the traditional Eden style of DJ, still, music critics have always noted the significant role of live instruments in Avicii's tracks, much more significant when compared with other electronic engineers. Speaking of Chris Martin and Coldplay, Avicii is the co-writer and producer of one of the band's biggest hits, A Sky Full of Stars. He added a more electronic and modern sound to the British band compared to their traditional alto-rock and pop-rock direction. And the idea worked. The clip has over 350 million views to date. Avicii has given serious attention to charity. The musician donated a significant part of his multi-million dollar income to the House of Hunger Foundation, which he created, whose goal was to fight hunger in the world. Everyone has their own weaknesses, and Tim Bergling, unfortunately, had one too, these are problems with alcohol. In 2012, he was hospitalized with pancreatitis caused by alcohol intoxication, later underwent surgery, and in 2016 he was even forced to take a break from touring due to health conditions. And although the causes of Tim's death were not announced, it is the consequences of alcohol problems that seem most likely. In one of the interviews, Avicii was asked if he had a time machine and the opportunity to work with any musician from any era, whoever it was. Tim replied that if you need to choose one, then let it be John Lennon. And he added that he was a real pioneer of his time and unfortunately, left us too early. Sadly, these words are now about Tim Berglin. Rest in peace, idol of millions, in heaven you have two talented companies. Tim Berglin, aka Avicii, passed away on April 20, 2018 at his home in Oman. The artist was only 28 years old. Smartwatch is not only a decoration or an element of an outfit, but also a personal assistant that makes life easier and motivates you to do sports. Smartwatches can help reduce the amount of unnecessary body movement, and you don't have to take your smartphone out of your pocket while driving or in a subway car to see who is calling you or who sent you a message on Twitter or Facebook. With this gadget, you will not miss an important color reminder. You will be able to switch a music track on the smartphone player. And this is not all the useful features of a smartwatch. They are able to show the time, 
Read your SMS messages. Monitor your health. Motivate you to play sports. And wake you up in the morning with care. No wonder these watches are called smart. We understand in detail what these modern gadgets have learned and what they can help us with. To be punctual. The watch is first of all about the time. However, the smartwatch screen is turned off most of the time to save power. Many watches have. 